I was just going to say, did you want to start the uh, recording? <laughs> Once I've had it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you all for, uh, for coming along to this community meeting. Um, we're what um, we will welcome and um, hopefully you will actually have the ability to actually um, give us your input by a men Mentimeter. So again, if you can um, either grab the QR code um, from the screen or Haley's actually put in the link directly in, into the chat. Um, this way it this way we can actually collect your, your responses and then um, think through the feedback that you've given us um, for the planning as, as we move ahead towards, um, towards the conference in October. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So again, just an icebreaker question. Which program, uh, wh where are you joining from? State, whether you're in the, in, in the States, in Canada or um, different countries. Tennessee. Awesome. <laughs> this is this is really nice. It's nice to, to see that we've got a range of uh, places that we're logging into. So thank you for participating um, in this. Um, and then the next thing is, if OpenEd had a mascot, what would it be? Which particular animal, whatever, a Cheeto? Somebody beat me to that one, darn <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, there has to be some, what's, what's the backstory with this? Yeah, um, it was the the original snack for the new open ed um, was were Cheetos. It, it had to do with that first conference, and it's been going since then. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's it. No one, Just a Cheeto? No other. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say nobody wants to, <laughs> to touch that one. <laughs> Oh, Alita, you know, you never introduced yourself. Oh, sorry. My name is uh, Alita Partisadarso. I'm um, logging in from Ontario, uh, Canada. This is my first time being on the board and I'm learning um, as we proceed along. So I'm very, very excited to be, to be part of this and, you know, <laughs> to load up my service component of my workload <laughs> with this, because this is a very important uh, piece. All right, I will introduce myself. I am Susan Payne. I am an education specialist at the Oregon Department of Education. So I'm in Oregon and um, also excited to be on the board. Uh, just want, want to, Sam, do you want to introduce yourself now or no? Okay, Later. Yeah. so I'll just jump into um, a preview of our agenda today. So we're going to give a brief operational update. We're going to talk about um, the call per, for proposals, hopefully you've seen that. Um, we And then we have a whole bunch of discussion questions because we want to get your input and then we'll um, we'll wrap up. I will be surprised if we are here for a full hour. <clears throat> All right, so for our operations update, um, we, our board has been busy kind of getting some internal structures in place. Um, we've established some operations roles and folks uh, volunteered for those. And then we also have um, four committees um, at this point. We may add um, additional committees, but uh, we have four at this point. So we have a program planning committee, a program implementation committee, 
a community engagement committee, and a finance team. And we have um, established co-chairs for each of those committees. And we're really intentional about um, pairing new board members with um, a more experienced member. Um, and so we are excited to get that program committee work um, started. And we are, um, we're over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start looking at uh, committee assignments um, in terms of volunteers. So there's still time to sign up to volunteer and um, Haili, I think just put that in the chat. So please do uh, grab that uh, interest form if you wanna volunteer. And, not, and it's not just for committee work, there's other, um, other opportunities for volunteering as well. I just want to add one thing about the the volunteering the the need for volunteers stretches out through the whole planning and then during the conference itself so even if you don't think that you can if you can only maybe uh, volunteer to participate during the conference um, that's okay as part of the interest form just sort of indicate what your availability is and then the other thing i i wanted to say is that if you volunteer, then um, it does form for those of us that have service as part of our workload, it does form part of the, the, the service um, requirements for, for the institution. I know I'm going to put mine <laughs> very heavily under service, so um, you can join us in that. Um, so the next thing is call for proposals. Um, it's, the deadline is in 14 days time or two weeks. Um, Haley again has been uh, has has put the uh, link for um, that and um, the theme this year is rise to action we also know that um, we uh, we're happy to um, we're, we're expecting a, a, a deluge of uh, proposals closer to the date so um, again um, please uh, consider that and the conference is um, in uh, in late October. So again, if you have that in mind, and it's an online only conference. So again, um, it's something that you can actually work into um, into life in the fall semester. So we're going to open this up now to our community discussion. And this is where your feedback and information um, is really, really important to us. Um, and I want to note that the Mentimeter, so if you're watching this by a video, um, the Mentimeter will be open for 14 days after this conversation. So you do have the opportunity to um, contribute your ideas after the conversation is over as well. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Sam Venerusso. I'm um, from Montgomery College in Maryland. And um, I serve on the board of uh, directors for the open ed um, this year. Um, our big focus right now or today is really to talk a bit about financing the conference um, and sort of the community's feedback and thoughts around how we finance this conference. This is a community um, grassroots kind of conference. So coming up with a funding structure that really supports it and allows it to be sustainable is super important, but it's also really important that we balance um, that information, that we balance how we find fund the conference with um, the values and expectations of our community. If you wanna to go to the next one. So in order to keep that balance of keeping the conference affordable while um, also making it sustainable and being fiscally responsible about it, there's some things that we wanna talk about and get from you today. Um, so your thoughts on what's an affordable rate, um, what concerns you might have around corporate sponsors if we are to take them, um, suggestions for sponsorship models and comfort uh, levels with, with different sponsorship models. Um, how can we make sure those sponsors that we take have, um, if we take them, that have values in line with the community? And then on the other thoughts um, that you might have about funding the conference or suggestions for funding. So our first question is, Susan? Yeah. Um, yeah, our first question is, what do you consider uh, to be affordable for a general registration fee and keeping in mind that it's an online conference. So there are, you know, four choices there. This is a slider um, when you're giving your response. 
And, um, you know, really the question is about like, is there a, a point where it would be prohibitive for you to attend the conference? Go ahead, if we wanna move on to the next one, if everybody's had a chance to answer that, I hope. There's not a lot of us here today. Um, so is this you, Alita? Yes. So with everything else in life, compromise is key. So we just wanted to get an idea of um, the importance, the relative importance of afford affordability or restriction of sponsorship um, to specific organizations who support um, our community. So um, yeah, if you can actually um, use the slider scale to um, let us know, you know, um, what your comfort level is with uh, affordability and sponsorship restriction. And again, um, in terms of the origin of the sponsorship, we're going to explore that in a little bit more detail as the slides um, progress. So thank you for your answer with this. So again, you know, uh, toying around or teasing around with this idea of the balance between affordability and sponsorship. The next question is really kind of, what is that balance in terms of what you're comfortable with? And the balance is between sort of a higher cost for registration being one side and a lower cost for registration for the other. Um, and then the different kinds of sponsorships. So we were, we're kind of trying to get your, your feel about where is your comfort level about the types of sponsors that we have? So we have vending from um, our uh, funding from vendors or corporate sponsors or for profit institutions, funding from private or charitable or inst institutions, um, and funding from education um, educational organizations. Um, where where's the balance between those two things? And if you're you know if you want the the we're really asking you, where do you want to see the sponsorship coming from? Where should we be um, pursuing um, or limiting our, our seeking funding? And just as a note, you know, this conference has been generously sponsored by the Hewlett Foundation um, and, you know, some other private donors for the past uh, two years, and this is our first year of sort of moving out of that protected funding and the the sort of organizations that put us together. So this is a really important question because in order to make this um, sustain sustainable, we really have to have a sense of you know where are we gonna how are we going to do that in an ongoing way. So if you want to move to the next question for us, Haley, that would be great. And so again, what are the strategies? Um, sort of the same question, but a different set of answers for us to look at. If you can rank um, where you want to see the funding coming from um, to make this conference sustainable. So uh, corporate sponsors would be for profit, fundraising from individuals, um, private individuals, private donations, those kinds of things, institutional sponsorships from nonprofit institutions like um, educational institutions or, or other associations or things like that. Um, private charitable institutions who might be um, in line with our mission and then um, finally uh, partnering with other organizations, nonprofit organizations. Great, thank you so much for that. We can move on to the next one. So with that, we've, we've just been asking um, sort of more big picture questions. This is an opportunity for you if you have any concerns about um, adopting a sponsorship model or which type of sponsorship model to, to adopt in order to actually fund the conference. So this is your chance to um, to let us know what your concerns are.
it's interesting because uh, I'm I'm going to a conference um, in a couple of weeks' time, and so I think all the uh, um, and and they do receive um, sponsorship from various organizations, and it must be a two weeks before the start of the conference. I'm starting to get emails from all these different sponsors of the conference that I'm going to in, in, in a couple of weeks. So, you know, there's there's that to be um, be balanced as well. I'll just I'll just hop in really quick to address one of the questions in the chat. Hi everyone, my name is Bailey Bab. I'm an open education project manager with the Spark team, um, who is supporting the conference. Um, so in the past, our our uh, main two funders have been you know the Hewlett Foundation and the Twenty Million Minds Foundation, um, which has been you know incredibly generous of both of those organizations. Um, we haven't done any sort of outreach whatsoever to any other um you know funding agencies so there haven't been any sort of conversations happening there outside of those funders that we already have um i think you know just looking at you know the future of this conference and what it could be um how can we make it the most sustainable um you know model possible um just looking at uh you know what are the other possibilities that are out there so um i think there's a very deep conversation to be had about, you know, um, the concept of aligning with values. Um, and I can pop in the link in the chat really quickly. The strategic planning team last year did a lot of work to build out um, a strategic vision for the conference that outlines um, some of our values, etc. Um, so, uh, you know, keeping that in mind as we move through, um, I know will be will be top priority. So just wanted to chime in with some info. And Haley, thanks for um, reminding us about the contribution of 20 million minds because that was a really important element of the conference last year. Um, and that's an example of a, of a, a charitable organization that might um, align with the interests of open ed um, and want to contribute. So um, we, did, we have had some really, really generous funders in the past. Um, and it, it's, you know, how do we maintain this? Um, but still also make it um, affordable and accessible to a greater range of people. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Yeah, good. Yes, our next question for you all is um, if you have any suggestions about securing outside funding for the conference. I did see something in the last um, question um, as a suggestion that maybe fits here, which is that idea of uh, taking advantage of uh, open source technology to be able to, to host the conference um, or to reduce costs, which is a great suggestion. And I will say that um, the misspelling in that question of conference is all on me because I was typing too quickly. Great question. Yeah, that is a good, good question. And I think there has been some conversation about, you know, what do membership models look like? Um, and that would be part of the strategic planning, long-term planning question. Partnerships with specific schools is a great suggestion as well. All right, I think we can probably transition to the general questions. So uh, our first one is, 
what other more general questions do you still have uh, that we could address at the next meeting? I think we've already seen some questions that have come up in, in others that we'll definitely talk about as a board and, and address next time, but are there other things that you still have questions about? <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a good question about um what does committee service look like and are those do you mean these meetings like the meeting that we're in right now or the committee meetings I think we can answer the first part of that. This meeting is recorded, <laughs> is being recorded and will be available um, for community members to watch. Um, that is a very good question about how we're gonna deliver Cheetos to all the attendees. Um, it, it, that, the question about the committee meetings is up to the individual committee. Um, I was part of the program committee last year. We did not record meetings. Um, but we did a lot of back channel information and communicated regularly via email. So if you couldn't attend the meeting, you often were able to catch up there. Um, I don't know about Susan's experience on um, committees last year. She might be able to share. Uh, I was on the strategic planning committee. I, I feel like those meetings might have been recorded, but Haley, do you, I don't totally yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to jump in. So I, I'm actually not aware we didn't record those strategic planning um, meetings. We did some work like with a um, consultant, which it, there may have been aspects of that that were recorded. I'm actually not 100% um, sure. Um, but the standard committee meetings in the past, we haven't recorded those. Um, it's definitely something like if there's strong interest from the community in, in doing stuff like that, um, it's something to talk about. I think to go back to that first question, can you elaborate on what committee service for this conference looks like? Um, I think it looks like a lot of different things depending on what committee you're sitting on. Um, we actually, we had our board meeting this morning and we were talking about um, the, you know, this question specifically about like, you know, which committees um, happen during what duration of the year. Um, so for example, you know, one of the first things that we're looking to gear up right now is the program. Um, committee to start reviewing the submissions from the call for proposals. Um, but, you know, things like, um, uh, like planning social activities during the conference that will happen a little bit later in the summer as we get closer to the date. Um, so each committee has sort of a different mandate and a different um, time commitment, depending on workload that we um, are in the process right now of, of drafting up what that will look like. Um, so yeah, I hope that, I hope that answers your question. Um, precedent is that the committee meetings are not recorded, um, but these community meetings, these consultations that we have with the community, they are recorded and we post them on the, um, open ed website, um, afterwards for you to go back and view anytime. Um, Haley, there's a question in the chat about the total number of attendees at open ed last year. Yeah. So last year, so this is, I, I love talking about this. <laughs> Um, so the last two years that the conference has been virtual, we've actually more than doubled the attendance rate from when the conference was held in person um, many years ago. So last year, I think we had um, 1800 like presenters, attendees, like combined everybody who was involved in the conference. Um, and that's just nuts to me. I can't believe um, we were able to convene so many people. Um, so very, very cool. I think you know the virtual aspect definitely does open a lot of doors for people um, and make it a little bit easier um, to come. So yeah, yeah. We also we also had sorry Haley. We had people um, from around the world. So we had participants from countries throughout the. It was a global. It was global in terms of our attendees. Um, the primary, I think, the the bulk of participants tend to come from the United States and Canada. But um, they're definitely because of the virtual nature of it, and we are thoughtful about trying to schedule it the best possible way so that um, um, there, it, it engenders uh, participation times from around as, as widely as possible. Um, and proposals 
um, came from all over the world. Um, we had, you know, just, it was just a really great um, arrangement. And I think that's Heather, you, on the open ed conference, the, pro the program from last year should be available. So you can kind of get a sense of what kinds of things were available um, last year, if that gives you some ideas for what you might like to uh, participate in or propose. Um, I also, some of the recorded presentations from last year are available. Haley can talk about whether they're still available, but we tend to try to release them. Like we released all of the, um, the recordings from last year's uh, proceedings to during open ed week in the spring. Um, so there is that uh, database of things available too. Thank you. So that's all on the website you said? Hey, Haley? Yeah, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just popping the link in the chat. Um, so the, the recordings from the 2020 and the 2021 conference are uh, available on our website. So if you go to openeducationconference.org, there's the participate tab at the very top um, and you'll see 2021 conference and 2020 conference. And I'm also just simultaneously um, linking those in the chat for us. Um, right. But yeah, uh, feel free to peruse those and get a sense of what past years have been like. Thanks. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, my experience, because I, I mean, and Tonja um, can also talk a little bit about her experience. And I think, you know, we've, I've been attending the conference since it was in person back in 2000, I don't know, ages ago, I can't even remember, it's like ancient history. Um, and so, at, you know, the online engagement has been wonderful. And, you know, there's a, there's a back channel um, through Discord. So there's sort of a, the synchronous piece of it as well as the asynchronous piece. The conference proceedings are synchronous, but then some of them are recorded. So they're available at different points. And so there's a lot of um, ability to engage regardless of kind of where you are. And Susan and Alita are um, the program chairs this year. So they can talk a little bit more maybe about their thoughts on the program. Uh, there's a quite okay so we can talk a little bit more about the in-person stuff for the next time around um any other questions that you guys and, and heather welcome um to the community we're glad to have you um we can uh, maybe move forward toward wraping up today um, again, this Mentimeter will be available and this recording will be available um, for 14 days after this. So, so if you're watching this as a recording, you can uh, jump in on these questions um, because we really do want your feedback and we're trying to get as much feedback, particularly around funding um, and making sure that this conference continues to align with the values of the community. Um, do, if you're interested in participating, depending on which, 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 committee you're part of, there's different levels of engagement and different points of engagement, as we've said earlier. Um, right now, there are four committees um, that have been formed. One is reviewing proposals. One is, uh, or the program committee, sort of setting up the whole program and looking at the proposals and that kind of stuff. There's an implementation um, committee, which will focus in more on the actual nuts and bolts of the conference itself. Um, and those two committees will work together. There's a finance committee and then there's a community engagement committee. So if you're interested in any of those, um, those are the four that we're, we're, we're rolling out right now. Um, and they have different levels of engagement needed. There's a link in the chat. Um, and we I would love to have you. A question too about if someone wanted to change something about what they already put on the form. Mm -hmm. Haley is the best thing for them to do is to just fill it out again or what's the best way for them to let us know um, that's a great question i would say probably go ahead and fill the form out again um and then maybe just put a note at the bottom of your application just to say that you know i filled this out once before please use this as the <laughs> um as the primary one and we can also you know see names uh, it just gets populated in the spreadsheet so we'll be able to have a time um attached to when you fill that out Great. Thank you. Um, so we're about to wrap up now. I see that we had a couple people join us a little bit after we started. We're happy to have you here. This whole uh, 
program will be, or this whole meeting will be recorded and available um, via link. And then the questions that we asked, um, you can continue to answer those questions in the Mentimeter for 14 days after today. So for the next couple of weeks. And it is, we're happy to have you um, and happy to see you here. Um, if you wanna advance to our very last piece, our next community meeting will be the same time, um, June 10th, um, and we will be, we are committed to having monthly community meetings with a different focus each time um, and trying to um, engage you guys about what you want to hear about. I think um, we're all really, really committed to this being um, a community-based conference. And I think that's it. If you want to continue to follow up, um, the dates are October 17th through October 20th. It will be virtual. Um, you can follow hashtag open ed 22 on um, uh, Mastodon, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and um, the at hey open ed opened is the um, is the general handle on each of the uh, social media sites. So we look forward to seeing you there and engaging with you there. If you have thoughts or questions, we are happy to have them. And we're really glad for your time today. Um, any other thoughts, Tonja or um, Haley or Susan or Alita? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. This The recording of this will be posted um, on the Open Ed website. If you go under the participate tab, there's a link for the community meetings and you'll be able to access this. So we'll get that posted as soon as possible. Thanks everyone for coming and have a fantastic weekend. Yep, thank you. Take care. Thank you.